，锵锵锵啊！你好吗？早好。<笑> OK 啊、ah, ，There you are. Thank you very much for your invitation. Ah,、oh, thank you. And we have quite a few guests coming in from your your、uh, students, it seems. Jishaj and I are、uh, conversing in both Chinese and Japanese, just to show off a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I think we need to wait a a couple of more minutes because I have quite a few people coming in. Very briefly, though, I can start to introduce a few people from my regular group, and and then hopefully、uh, your students will introduce themselves from my regular group. So we have Adam Green, who's a friend of Tim Holmes. Mirtas Oliveira from Paraiba, Brazil, believe it or not, and we have Jing Tan, from, who is an architect in Seattle. We have Joe Bullock. Joe is from the San Francisco area. Is that right, Joe?、Uh, no, actually, right outside Philadelphia.、Um, oh, outside Philadelphia. Oh my、yes. goodness, you're close. Okay.、Yep. Thank you. What is the town of? Outside Philadelphia,、uh, Haddonfield, New Jersey. Haddonfield, okay. Yeah, it's right over the bridge, right over the Walt Whitman Bridge. And now we have Nicholas Chan, who is one of our regulars from Singapore,、uh, coming aboard. And、uh, let's see, who, who am I missing?、E、Idris Wardak is from、uh, Vancouver. How many students do you have, sir? Oh, I just let them know yesterday and today. I just、uh, the students. You, know, we have a South China Normal University, right? Have an institute for analytical psychology, and、okay. Shanghai Flying University a few years ago have a program for analytical psychology PhD graduate students, and now we have a Macau City University in Macau. Yes, several hundreds. Aha.、Uh -huh. Okay. Well, we're. <laughs> We're going to have a. We have not a, not all of them.、Uh, the, just the, yesterday, I have a seminar with the students. I mentioned today, and we'll、yeah. have a talk, and online for red book and uni psychology in China, and、uh, probably some students they are good English. They wanted to join.、Mm -hmm. Probably the.、Uh, okay. And,、uh, we've just been joined by、uh, Les Morgan, who. Uh, was involved in the publication of the Tao Te Ching,、uh, oh. one one publication of it. He now lives in Pacifica, California.、Uh, shall we introduce everyone, Dr. Shen, or just go ahead?、Uh, probably we are just go ahead, and、uh, we have. A, I think I can use a one hour, a one hour, thirty minutes at least. Let's have a thirty minutes or、okay. more a discussion. Yeah. In the discussion, we can introduce ourselves. This evening, we're honored, very honored, to be、uh, in the presence of Heyong Shen, who is a professor of psychology at South China University. Is that right? And plus the City University of Macau. He is the editor in chief of the project to translate the works of C. G. Young into Chinese, which is a Non-trivial task, of course. So we're honored to have you here, and I, I'm also honored to have Les Morgan here, who has been involved in a, a translation of the Tao Te Ching and also、uh, a translation of the、uh, Bhagavad Gita, which I'm currently reading into my YouTube channel. Dr. Shen was one of the first.、Uh, volume one of Yoga's Red Book for Our Time. Uh, was published about four years ago. It's this book, and it's Young's Red Book for Our Time: Searching for Soul Under Postmodern Conditions,、uh, edited by Mary Stein and Thomas Arst. And Thomas Arst was、uh, a mentor of mine, and part of what I'm hoping to do through the next few months is to honor his memory. By interviewing the various people who have written in the now four volumes of this series, it's quite an impressive series. But、uh, Dr. Shen has 
was in uh, the very first one. And so I'm going to switch the speaker view so that you can speak to us, Dr. Shetland. I will keep quiet, but I have these images ready when you want to share them. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your invitation and your introducing my background. So good evening and good evening. Uh, even morning, good morning time. <laughs> good Ciao. Morning. Yeah. Ciao. <laughs> and uh, I'm very happy to have this chance to join with you and uh, the Kaohyung Deaf Psychology Reading Group. And uh, yeah, we can start with the Red Book. As you mentioned, the, the volume of one, I wrote an essay with a very interesting title, Why the Red Book is Red. I have the Red Book beside my hand. The Red Book is Red. The background for this uh, project is uh, Maurice Dan, co-authored by Thomas Ast. The uh, wrote a letter to friends uh, that's a uh, few years ago. And uh, for reflection on the Red Book at the postmodern condition. I'm very sorry that I think people know and Thomas Us passed away um, recently. And Morris Dan, the co author of these uh, four volumes, Morris Dan wrote an article for memory for him. And uh, so we're all sad for the lost. But the work is going on. The fifth volume is on the way. And, uh, and also I prepare another essay for the five volume with uh, the spirit of the depth for the Red Book and the knowledge of the heart. I think one of the purpose for C.G. Jung started his uh, named personal experiment, most difficult and even dangerous, the, the purpose is to try to find the soul or find the soul back with the knowledge of the heart. The knowledge of the heart is the way. Go into the depths, depths, the depth of spirit, the depths of psychology. So, and, and also, I think you told me that besides of the Red Book, we can talk about the union psychology in China, my personal experience with the depth psychology. So probably the first part, I, I introduced my idea with the reflection of the Red Book, why the Red Book is red. Then for discussion, we can open for any question if, uh, if people interested in uni psychology in China, my personal process to be a uni analyst in China. So it's my pleasure to share with, with you today. And uh, okay, why the red book is red? <laughs> I know that you have a series of a talk on red book on the YouTube feed. And uh, the, yeah, the color. Exactly. Now we have a black book <laughs> because of the color of the cover of the color of the cover. No, not only. If we open the red book, usually the D, for instance, the way of coming is red. And the most important sentence, C. June started with the color of red almost every pages. And with the uh, Isduba, for instance, the special images and the uh, Jung painted, the, like the filament, the almost in red, in red clothes and uh, in red color background. So why the red book is red? And then I found some uh, clue or thread for this uh, interesting thinking. The first is uh, Sunu in his uh, introduction to, uh, to the Red Book. He mentioned the secretary, the secretary of a CGO, uh, Carrie Benz, who translated the Yijing. And he 
she spent time as a secretary to make copies, copy the, the, the black books into the red books, for instance. And he kept the diary and looks like letters to CGO. But even sooner, he didn't know and the bands sent out these letters or not. But we are very lucky to have the materials he, she recorded. For instance, in 1920s, and uh, Ben wrote a letter to C. G. Yong and mentioned, she writes, in another book of Mei Ling, people know he's a famous writer. And uh, in Mei Ling's the novel, The White Dominican, is uh, also translated into Chinese, Ben said, wrote to C. G. Yong, Yo, Yo, said he, the writer, Meeting, made use of exactly the same symbolism that had come to you in the first version that revealed to your unconscious. They are talking about the black box and the red box. Furthermore, you said that a pain wrote to see to you. You is uh, you is you. Furthermore, you said you had spoken of a red book. That means you wanted to design to create a red book, which contained certain mysterious that the book you are writing about the unconscious, you have named or called the red book. So this thread mentioned by Sunu in the introduction, that before you use the title or Red book, he knew that the writer Mailing has a similar red book already. The CDU familiar, a lot of uni analysts appreciate Mailing's words as, as the, the gold man, for instance, the green face. That's quite a famous novel. And uh, for Ben's, the letter to CDU, the we have uh, important information about the Red Book by Meiling. Quote, in the novel of Meiling, Meiling said, the founding father informs the hero of the novel. His name is Christopher, Christopher, that whoever processes the cinema Red Book the plant of immortality, the awakening of the spiritual breath, and the secret of bringing the right hand, the secret of bringing the right hand of life will dissolve with the coast. It is called the Cinnaba Book, Cinnaba Red Book, because according to ancient belief in China, that red is the color of the garments of those who have reached the highest stage of perfection and stayed behind on earth for the salvation of mankind. So I appreciate this uh, Ben's record, record of the background of Red Bull. When Morris Dan and Dr. Thomas, the the idea, when Jung created the Red Book, 1913, for instance, he started. The time, that, that time before the First World War is uncertainty, threatening to the mankind. And uh, even a few years ago, Maurice Dan realized the uncertainty today, the dangers everywhere like the virus today. Yeah. If everyone is uh, several millions of people in, and even in the United States, over 100,000 died by the virus. So then if we have a similar situation before the First World War, the uncertainty and the threatening and the today, the international relationship, 
the relationship between people, the relationship between people and the nature. So what we can learn from the Red Book, the teaching, the images. So that's the started for the reflection of the Red Book research of the soul in the post-modern condition. It's very interesting because in the novel of Meiling, he connected the red book, the color, to China already. Like the Taoism, for instance, especially as uh, Skip you just mentioned, where friends today online who translated the Tao Te Ching. And uh, in Meiling's book, he influenced by the Chinese culture and the Taoism. Uh, it's just happened. Now in China, in South part of China, uh, outside my window, I'm in the building, it's raining, it's a thunder, and the Latin, it's just Latin. Oh, great. <laughs> Each one. I'm not very sure you can hear from my computer, but it's a big rain, it's a thunder, and the Latin outside. Right. In the mountain, I, I'm living now in the, mon in the mountain. I, I hope I hope we don't get struck by lightning here. But <laughs> okay, but I hope I just listen to you for a second of the thunder. Yes, and the writer from Meiling and also as well as C. G. Jung, they really appreciate the Taoist philosophy. Just give one example: in the 1921, C. G. Jung, C. G. Jung, and published the book *The Psychological Type*. I have my fingers crossed. This is going to work. <laughs> the, yeah, it's a Latin and the sound. Uh, Jung wrote the book, the Psychological Types, with the subtitle is the, the Psychology of the Individuation, the Psychology of the Self. Right. And in this book, in this book, he quoted half of the Tao Te Ching, almost. Uh -huh. And the most difficult and for his try to in Andromedia, if I pronounce this right, it's a Latin term. And uh, in Andromedia. So that's how to integrate the opposite, the conflict. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he thought the Tao is the way. If we can't get the meaning from the Tao, we can have the way, the method or methodology and to go through the integration, the wholeness for the opposite. And even for ego and the self, for instance. Yeah. The, so that's the very interesting for the original idea of the meaning of the Red Book and the learned by the, by the Chinese Taoist and as well as the C.G. Jung. The, in the essays, uh, it's a little difficult. I try my best to 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 describe to you. Jung wrote, you show the image of the page for the painting one five nine. One five nine. Just okay. show. But, like... but the last page of the red book, last yeah. page, just with the date is a nine nineteen. 59, 1959. In, that's the last page of the Red Book. Jung wrote, quote, I always knew that these experiences contained something precious. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I knew of nothing better than to write them down in a precious, valuable, that is to say, costly, costly book and to paint the images that emerge through reliving, uh, emerge the through reliving it all as well as it could. Unfinished sentence. Right. And uh, so I think it's the, why he chose the cinema right, because even the writing style of the Red Book is influenced by the middle, what's called Middle Ages, 
in the 15th century, for instance, mm -hmm. that kind of style. That kind of style. He didn't use the modern language, and he painted even people as we familiar with the with the red book, for instance. And uh, Here, let me show this. This is the first page of the red book. <laughs> yes, that's the style of the. Thank you. Then at that time, at that time, seeing about red is very valuable, precious, and uh, it's uh, like the, so you choose the seeing about red, but this seeing about red at that time, at that time, is imported from China into the euro. It's very interesting. Even today it's popular, but at that time, it's imported from China. And in Chinese, we call the Zhu Hong, since some are Chinese students and Chinese, uh, uh, or Chinese scholars online, they're familiar with the Chinese. Zhu Hong in Chinese, yes. And uh, <laughs> that's a cinema, right? And the Zhu first character, and the Hong, the image of the home, I should mention first, Si Jun learned Chinese language. He used quite well. He learned Chinese characters. And when Si Jun learned the Yi Jing, the images, the hexagrams, and he learned the Chinese characters, he said, once he said, oh, the Chinese character is readable archetypes. Or the Chinese characters and the hexagrams, they are readable archetypes. Mm -hmm. Beautiful description, readable archetypes. So the readable archetypes is a very important thread for us to go through into the depths of the spirit, the depths of psychology, for instance, for your reading group, the sure. depths. So the Hong in Chinese, the red, the left part of the Hong, it's, uh, let's see, how can I say? It's like a fine silk, silk connection, mm -hmm. right. like the, the silk. And the right part of the character, the right part of the character, the Hong in Chinese, the image is a one, two, three. The first one, the top one, is heaven. The lower one is earth. And this is connection. Who is connection to the heaven and the earth? If you put a two figure of a person, that's shaman. The Chinese character for shaman is uh, two special persons, very special. They are, yeah, I think the two, or home, and uh, you probably know the. You can write down if you can write down the character to people who are not familiar with the Chinese characters. So mm. the red in Chinese is connection like the like the silk. The silk behind the silk is the warm. It's a very special connection to weaving to the femininity, to great mother, to, to, the, to the goddess of fate. People know the three goddesses of the fate. They are weaving and with this uh, silk. So that's a very special thread. And the thread, this even Latin and English term, and also from this uh, very special image. So that's combined, connecting the thread is not just the history, not just the human kind of history, but the heaven and the earth. So wow. that's the meaning in Chinese of the red. So we call it the red book. Really? Now, another character in Chinese related to the red, especially cinnabar red. The cinnabar red have another Chinese character with a Dan. This Dan pronunciation is inner argument. 
Exactly. Si Tiong influenced by Chinese culture as uh, Mr. Skip showed the two pictures to us before we started. One is a Yun painted for, in fact, it's for the Liverpool Dream in 1927. Ah, yes. Okay. Yeah, he named as Window to Eternity. The second he painted is the, 1928. This, this is the one. Let me uh, share it. Yes. Um, the and, castle. And yeah, this is the window. Yeah, this is the window to eternity. And of the course, this, this is connected to the Liverpool dream. Yes. And, and we can bring it back, but I, I'll show the other one too. Yeah. Uh, just it, the, other, the other one is connected. The, the structure, the color, very similar. And probably you mentioned that's his last mandala. And after that, because Richard Wilhelm sent him the toast, yeah, this, uh, this, this is uh, the, one. The, the, the golden castle. And he the asked himself, he, he asked himself, why does this look so Chinese? Why so Chinese? Yeah. <laughs> why, why, why so Chinese? Right. When you painted of this a second, why so Chinese? And when he's asking himself, why so Chinese? At that moment, that moment, and from someone knocked the door, and there is a post package he opened, and that's the Saint by Richard Wilhelm, the secret golden flower. Yeah. So he wrote the small characters behind behind of this painting, that's synchronicity, yeah. exactly, synchronicity. And after this event, this synchronicity, Jung stopped his work with the Red Book. He returned back to the real world. You mentioned exactly in the memory dreams reflection. That's the event, the first event, and uh, awakening him from the everyday 24 hours in the red book, images and the dreams, the fantasies. And then, okay, wake up for the real world. And he step back or step into the real world. So that's uh, 16 years for his uh, experimental, personal, very hard for the red book, but uh, awakened by this uh, you can see the secret of golden flower. It's yes. very interesting, very meaningful. And if we are called reflection of the red book, it's a, it's a very good thread, very good event or image for us, like a mirror for reflection. Why yeah. so Chinese? Yeah. <laughs> Why so Chinese? Excuse me, even the virus today. Yeah. Even the virus today. And uh, in China, in the whole world, why? And uh, yeah, we can ask. We I don't think anybody is going to tell us. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> we have to wait for the synchronicity for that one. Uh, so for the the second Chinese character to name the scene by red is Dan. The Dan is ex exactly naming of the inner arcana. Dan, the Dan probably for Chinese people, they play the Tai Chi. They're also familiar with the three point. They can up and the, 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 the center and also quite important, it's especially even for Chinese acupuncture and the Chinese adoist in the argument. So it's just synchronicity for this Dan and also the shaman and the the, the, the connecting, the, the silk, and the fine silk, and the connecting not only the human being, but heaven and the earth. And uh, another very interesting synchronicity, as we know, the Jung's Red Book, it's uh, the labor novels. Okay, red color, 
we used to call okay red book, but you wrote the the labor novels, yeah. and if translated into English, new book, right? Yes, new book. Right. But the new in Chinese, Xin, Xin. is is the heart. Ah, of course, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, the image of this uh, Chinese character for new. It's uh, image. Image is not still. Image is moving. It's dynamic. The image, image is emotion, emotional image. That's a Sijun style. The image of the Xin, the new in Chinese, is try to get the point from wood, the heart of the wood. The heart of the wood is red. This is a very special wood or special tree. Inside of the tree, there is a red heart. Mm -hmm. That's new in Chinese. So the new book or the red book, the red of course related to the heart. Or heart is red. Or heart, I hope, still today we are yes. heart <laughs> not black, <laughs> not the other color. So that's uh, symbolically, yeah. at least we have a red heart. And uh, so, and uh, in the paper, so I try to with the title "Why the Red Book is Red," and uh, I worked as the two images with the Jung's uh, Liverpool Dream. The dream is a very important to see in 1927, and uh, one year before the Secret Golden Flower. And that's almost the end of his working on the Red Book. And uh, he got the dream, I think people know that he named it called the Liverpool Dream. The first related to, he dreamed in Liverpool, the city in British, the England, the Liverpool. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, just after raining, it's, uh, that's not, not happy experience when started with a dream, with the mud and uh, uneasy on the, on the road. But finally, you know, and reach the, the center. The center has water and also like with the tree. The tree, special tree with a flower. The flower is a quite a special flower, especially in Chinese herbs, in Chinese. Uh, a medicine with the red in the, the white color with the red. And you tried to paint, to draw the, the image, like the what we learned from the red book, the Philemon, the Isduba. He's an artist. He's a, no doubt he's a really artist. And even he's, a, he's a argued it's not art. It's <laughs> so psyche. He, he argued with the, he, he not you was not happy if you say it's art. And he thought he's a psyche the so but after the Red Book published, three years after publication, the World International Encyclopedia, the handbook of art, artist, quoted CGO to accept CGO as, as artist <laughs> because of the Red Book. Yeah. And uh, today we talk about the art of a city, you know, the art of a red book. And uh, you know, very interesting. So he experienced, I, I have the picture, copy of the picture of Jung's uh, nine years old. Jung was nine years old, he draw pictures. Nine years old, 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So it's a very interesting uh, early pictures of a city. You know. and, so you very experienced, but he tried, he tried to draw like the filament, the figure, the fantasy of the dream, but he unfinished. We can see the sketch in the red book. Let's see if I can get that immediately. I think it's, uh, it's very interesting. And uh, this drawing, in the red book, I see mm. closer. Yeah, yeah. 
Sorry. Yep. This one is the sketch unfinished of the dream of Liverpool. The unfinished. So, as we have a red book, we can see what, but a few weeks after the dream, one of our close friend passed away, Jung probably infected, influenced by the event was happened. He painted the mandala as you show the first one, 158, 159, the window to eternity. So that's, and this drawing is connected with the dream of Liverpool. Yeah. And then one year after that, and probably that's the last, it's the last, and after this is the last mandala for the, for the, his red book. And also after that, uh, 1928, he almost uh, stopped of the working with the red book. And of these two paintings, and also very close, the color structure, as I gave you mentioned, why so Chinese? After the second drawing, second drawing. Why so Chinese? And you answered, it's no way, it's, uh, it's uh, nothing looks connected with the China, but why so Chinese? But I can tell you, even the Liverpool dream, two parts, Liverpool, liver in Chinese medicine, the five elements, all connected with the heart, liver, and there's a system, dynamic system, I think the blood related to the liver and the blood related to the heart and also they have a red color. And uh, beyond of that, even the Liverpool, the city, is the first Chinatown in the Europe, in the West. The first Chinatown. Yeah, that's, that was biggest. new to me. Even today, not, not even today. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. In, in the first Chinatown in the West, mm -hmm. Liverpool. So it's uh, this kind of connection we can name it or said or it's synchronicity, synchronicity, and all you can see the meaningful connection. That's unconscious. That's my way or Uni's way through dreams or sand play or through the life. You can feel behind of the phenomenon. Right. It's psychic. It's the unconscious is every, everywhere. Everywhere. Unconscious. Everywhere. <laughs> it's, not, it's not just in the book. It's not just in dreams. Probably according to Sigmund Freud, the dreams is the platform, is the way to unconscious. Yes. But for CGO and analytic psychology, collective unconscious everywhere. So the the I can go a little further by why answer I tried to answer why so Chinese? Why what's the meaning? What's the purpose? What's for the red book is if it's true, the red book is red. And the red is connected to China. What's the meaning? Even if it's true. I can I can say it's true. The red book is red. And uh, the, red, the red is, for Sijun, the red book, the cinnabar red is imported from China. And, uh, but what's the meaning? So we, we can go to further reflection. What's behind of that if this connection, this thread is true? And also with reflection, for Jung's question, why so Chinese for the window to eternity and the secret golden flower? The secret golden flower, and also it's uh, when Sidion started the Eleanor's East and the West around the table in 1933, he started with the, a, study of, uh, a study of the process of individuation and that he used the Mace X. 24 drawing pictures. And when the ninth of the pictures, Jung and his patient, Miss X, I know who is Miss X, 
but I still use the Miss X, <laughs> not use her name. I studied the, 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 this case and uh, he, she painted 72 paintings, you used 24. I even did research of the other pictures by this lady. Mm -hmm. Because the ninth of the painting you named with this patient, so flower. So flower. Mm -hmm. This flower is a secret golden flower connected, yeah. in fact. For this so flower, for this American lady, Miss X, she used the Chinese elements. Why so Chinese? He used the four hexagrams. The four hexagrams for this beautiful, you named the so flower with the four Chinese hexagrams. Uh -huh. and, and, and for the 72 paintings of this lady, I did research of the, with the, the, the archive and the library of the CGO Institute of the Kuznacht. She quite often painted the elements from the Chinese five elements, yin yang symbol, and uh, like we talked about the Tao, the Tao symbols, like the secret golden flower. With the secret golden flower, Si Jun used beautiful images from the doors in the argument. So that's just, we can, okay, synchronicity, but it's meaningful. Um, why so Chinese? And we talk about China. To me personally, the name China or Chinese is not just a name for some people of our country. It's not just of that. The image of the what we call the China or Chinese, we use the Zhong. Zhong is uh, the sun with the, that's in the, not only the middle, like the doctrine of the mean, it's, uh, as I talk about the red, is heaven, connecting heaven and earth. So the symbol of the Zhong the symbol of the Zhong is a principle from the Yi Jing, the Book of Changes. The, this character, yeah, people know that according to the history, the Chinese history of the Qing Dynasty, we have a United Kingdom, we call it the China after the Qing. Before that is a spring and the warning state times, it's many countries. Finally, seven countries. Before that, 100 countries in this land, Asian land, the Chinese people, the all Chinese people, 100 countries. And finally, they have seven countries. The, the war states time, they fought each other. Finally, in the 200 BC, and the, the king united. So we have the China, okay. United the king, China. Yeah. But before that, we have Chinese medicine already. Even the Chinese medicine is not a name for medicine from China or from a continent. The, the Zhong is the principle. Yin and the Yang, the harmony and the balance is called the Zhong. The equilibrium. The, the world today, uncertainty. We need this equilibrium personal, even the political policy, government, West and East, and uh, even human being with the nature. We know the ecology today is threatening. And uh, so this equilibrium is, we call it China, Chinese equilibrium. So why so Chinese is not only because I'm a Chinese, we talk about the country or people, no. The I Ching, the book of changes, is it belong to the human being, everyone. It's a gift from the heaven, from God, for instance. It's not belong to some specific specific people, and uh, so the this character very simple Zhong. So I try to use the equilibrium 
not the mean, not the middle, not even not the center. The Zhong also, the equilibrium is the center. And also it's core. Even the Latin words, C-O-R is a core. The core is the center, like the Liverpool dream. Finally, he attracted, reached, arrived in the center. The center, Jung realized, is self. It's not ego. It's not the head. The center in the Liverpool dream is the self, the big S self. So for the why so Chinese red book, the thread leading us to the very important of the belong to the human being, the equilibrium, even when we are facing the uncertainty of the world today, this moment, especially this moment, the COVID virus and uh, threatening even still going on. And I just got a letter from Luigi Zoya before I get into the Zoom mm -hmm. for the talk. And uh, we work together for the, for people in China and Haiti. When the January 26th, when the, our team, the China Society for Analytical Psychology, I'm the president of this society, we set up the we name the garden of the heart and the soul online. We try to, to help the, the doctors and the nurse who are working with the uh, infected by the virus and the people who infected and their families. We started in January 26th. And for one month, several thousand people visited online. And after two and three months, the virus in China looks like controlled, but the international, just give an example, it had it. It's, uh, I'm so sad for the influence there. So I worked with our Italian colleagues, UNG analysts, try to work together for people in Italy, even Iran. I visited Iran last year. We have very good friends there. They are psychologists. We try to and support each other for the people who are infected by the virus. And uh, so this, uh, even before we started the project of the reflection for the Red Book, like the four volumes, but the original idea is how do we face the uncertainty, the threatening, the challenge of the complex, the shadow, the evil, even the virus, for instance. And uh, so the equilibrium, how to get this kind of equilibrium, it's uh, quite important. This I want to bring, share with our Yunjin analyst through the article, the essay of the why the red book is red. Mm -hmm. for yes. For instance, the equilibrium the Zhong, with the name of China or Chinese, it's the most important principle of the Yi Jing. Zhong is the second line and the fifth line. The six lines of one hexagram, you can divide it for the inner trigram, outer trigram. The inner trigram is a three lines, for instance. So we have the, the second one, it's called the Zhong, Zhong Yao. The, 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 the line at the center. And uh, then the fifth. So the, the, the connection between the second and the fifth, so important. And the convince contained the most important theory, principles, even the methods of the Yijin. Mm -hmm. And uh, When C. T. Jung, I mentioned the, the book, Psychological Types, in 1921, he tried to deal with the conflict between two parts, separated, East and West, for instance. 
can they go together, <laughs> East and West, or conflict between East and West? So it's a complex system theory today. It's not only the East and West, not only China, the United States. It's a quite complex. Yeah. As I mentioned, we have an Italian I, order. I have some uh, variety of images uh, of the yin yang symbol that might help explain this. Uh, I'll share one here first. Uh, I presume you. you could see that. And in that symbol, obviously, it's showing levels, uh, more levels within it. And uh, then I have a much more complex version of it, uh, which I'll share with you. Um, this one um, gives a more complete uh, view yeah. of of how yin and yang is in on in many many different dimensions, and. Um, then of course there's um, there's one other that's of course near and dear to everyone's heart, and um, that's this one. Oh yeah, the balance between men and women. Um, but obviously this is goes to the Tao, and the and the Tao is the line down the middle. <laughs> Yes. Right. Um, so. Yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, the most important of the principle of Zhong, like the classics book of the doctrine for the me, is really from these kind of images, the balance of yin and yang. But for CGM practical way, for union analysis, clinical therapy, or the depth psychology. It's the, the equilibrium is not just the not not just the balance or the center. It's beyond transcendental function. In 1916, Jung wrote the essay or paper for with the title Transcendental Function and the third level. So the drone equilibrium is, is transcendental. It's not, and even the, the images you show just escape, it's, they have a transcendental meaning inside. And, uh, and also, as you mentioned, the Taoist is very important. The Taoist and also originated from the Yijing. Lao Zi, who wrote the 5,000 words for Dao De Jing, he's the keeper of the Yijing. I think people know this. It's a story. Even Confucius himself consulted, take Lao Tzu as, uh, as a teacher, because probably Confucius learned Yijing from Lao Tzu. And uh, so for the Yijing, when the Confucius worked on the Yi Jing, gave the great commentary translated into English, we call the Ten Wings. The Ten Wings, the first important is called the Great Commentaries. The Great Commentaries in Chinese, in Chinese, Xi Tzu. Xi Tzu, the Great Commentary. The Xi Tzu, the Xi, is left part of the red book, the red, the fine silk, connecting, yes, and the connecting heavy earth and human being. So there's a three elements who learned very well. Three most important part of the Yi Jin symbols is heaven, earth, human being. For instance, if the inner why so important of the of the Zhong or the second fifth because they are symbolically human being. If uh, the top one is heaven, lower is the earth, 
in the middle is human being. We are between heaven and earth. And for the six lines, the third and the fourth lines is a symbol of a human being. If the first line, second line is uh, earth, fifth and the sixth is heaven, but the third and the fourth is human being. So the great commentary and also with the same image and the character of the red sheets. So it's, uh, we can say, it's synchronicity again. Connecting what? Relation what? Heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. Because, and we are human beings between the heaven and earth. And even, especially today, the stars is really related to us. Every stars, not only the sun and the moon, not only the sun and the moon. We cannot live without the sun and the moon or human being in the earth. Earth is a star. Every star is really, especially today, we are, have the advanced that technology we can have, a, we can see, we can get more, more, more about the universe. We know that yes. it's really not only the, the world is not only the earth. <laughs> Our mm -hmm. world have a sun. The, the, the symbol of the sun and the moon, Chinese symbol, is the name for Yi Jin, for Yi. Yeah. The up symbol is sun, lower is moon. Put them together is the name for Yi. The I Jing. I Jing, if you're in Germany pronunciation, to know yourself. <laughs> I Jing. I is personal and person, myself. And we are automatically, unconsciously, put ourselves between the heaven and the earth. So that's very interesting. And the book, and very interesting images, especially your shoulders, the, the, the images related to the Taoist. Si Jun like Lao Zi and the Zhuangzi very much. Zhuangzi also great Taoist. And uh, Yun said, I'm the dealer's lover of the Yi who can translate this uh, sentence from CGU? Jeweler's lover of Yijing. He's a lover, L O V E R of Yijing, but added jailers. Jailers is the right pronunciation. You jealous, can, I think. Yeah. Jealous, he's yes. Jealous. <laughs> jealous. He's a jealous lover of Yijing. Yeah. How, how could you paraphrase of this uh, Yun's words? Jealous lover. Uh, well, jealous lover is someone who is is worried that uh, is worried that there's somebody else besides them, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so he's uh, always he's always worried that uh, his girlfriend has another boyfriend or vice versa. Her boyfriend has another girlfriend. That's a jealous lover. Okay, that's Jung's uh, feeling. And yeah. Jung expressed himself with his, uh, with the Yi That's yeah. a relationship between Jung yeah. and the Yi Very interesting. Yeah. I, and I, Jung, I find it very powerful uh, for synchronicity uh, to use the Yi Ching, or uh, I also use the Tarot, uh, but, um, but I've had people read tea leaves for me, all kinds of things, and they all seem to work. And Yun like Lao Tzu very much. He liked Zhuangzi very much. The Zhuangzi is the dreamer of the butterfly dreams, beautifully. Or Yun the analyst, or like the dreamer of a butterfly. And Zhuangzi is the dreamer of this beautiful dream. And Yun said, I'm the follower of the Tao. I'm the uh, believer of Zhuangzi philosophy. He, he, he used the believer in English. He wrote a letter to a Chinese philosopher, Zhang Zhongyuan, in the 1950s. I'm the believer of Zhuangzi philosophy. I'm a follower of the Tao. And uh, just for example, the Lao Tzu says, I'm not very sure it's a good translation, all things carry yin and yang and have yang being harmonized by equilibrium of 
or can I say? It makes Equilibrium sense. of what? Equilibrium of, let's say, V A C A N C Y. V A C A. V A C A N C Y. Vacancy. Equi equilibrium of vacancy. Yeah, it's amity. It's uh, it's that's kind of. He said the. He, he that's uh, one of the translation, the popular translation. All things, carry in and have having young, being harmony by equilibrium of this kind of a special amity. Mm -hmm. So the the Zhong, what we call the China or Chinese, is the foundation of Confucius. Confucius tradition, like I mentioned, the doctrine of the Mi in Chinese we call the Zhong Yong. A quote from this doctrine of the Mi: When joy, anger, sorrow, and happiness are not revealed, they are Zhong. In the Mi, when joy, anger, sorrow, and happiness. Are not revealed. They are drawn equilibrium in the mean. When they are revealed, expressed, they are he. He means harmony. And the drawn is the base of everything. And he harmony is the right way to reveal everything. So that's a quote from the Zhong Yong, the doctor of the mean. If drawn equilibrium. And he, the harmony, are achieved. The world would run smoothly. Otherwise, we are we are in danger, like the world today. For Buddhism, for Buddhism, they are Buddhism, and in China, sometimes we call the Chinese Buddhism, and、uh, from Indian. And we call it Indian Buddhism, and、uh, they are the same Bo Buddhism, but a different styles. And for the Chinese Buddhism, even the Buddhism from India, they still take the middle way very important. And、uh, the middle way, even when Buddha described the noble eightfold path and leads to liberation. And also use this、uh, the middle way, a capital the M and the W, and、uh, that's also in Chinese the Zhong Dao, Zhong Dao. So that's for Buddhism. The Taoist try to keep the Zhong Shou Zhong, and、uh, the the Buddhi the the Confucianism. Like Zhong Yong, so important, and even the Buddhism in China. The CD Yong, the Red Book, and、uh, in the Red Book, what have, what have, what so important, Yong searched diligently for the heart and the soul. We know that when Yong started, he repeated, repeated, "My soul, where are you? Do you hear me?" <laughs> That's from the CG. So he's so hard, searching so hard for the heart and the soul, the middle way, and the Tao, and the self, and the process of individuation. Just give an example. For instance, in nineteen, let's see, in nineteen fourteen, June twenty-four, Yong wrote, "In the night, my soul spoke to me. The greatest comes to the smallest." <laughs> That's、uh, in the red book, and、uh, so the the. The principle of the Tao, even the images like Skip Shores, 
and like the I Ching, the when Yun was very young, and he he wrote in memory, dreams reflection, he influenced by the the Buddhism, like the Zhuangzi philosophy, for instance. When he grew, when he was uh, about thirty years old, when he reflection of his uh, childhood, oh, the thinking of when I was young, that's a Zhuangzi philosophy, like the about dream of a butterfly, and uh, so in the red book, and he expressed a very similar ideas with the Taoist, for instance. And after the he, nineteen uh, fourteens, after one year, that's nineteen fifteens. And uh, one year silence of the voice from the the soul, or the collected unconscious, or the psyche. And uh, Jung saw an image, and uh, with the big fish. And the bird and the fur and the fish. Then, Si Jiung heard the voice from the soul again. The voice told Si Jiung or telling Si Jiung that is the sign, and what is below is born upward. Like the yin and the yang, like the the red, the character in Chinese. The image and the meaning of the Chinese the equilibrium, and the right part of the character of the red, of the red book, is just the union of the up and the low, heaven and earth. The in the three parts, three three volumes. Of the red book, the first one, eleven chapters; the second one, twenty-one chapters. The third part is uh, Jung used the, the seven sermons to the dead, delivered by the Philemon in red book. Even another name when Jung first published in the Memory Dream Reflection. The Philemon, the figure. Image of fantasy, according to David Rosen, according to David Rosen, who wrote the book The Tao of Jung, is image of the Taoist, according to David Rosen, and he wrote this uh, in his uh, The Tao of Jung. <laughs> the film, <laughs> according to David Rosen, is a Taoist figure, feels the meaning of the Tao of Buddhism. As in the teaching, I quote: "I begin with the nothingness. Nothingness is the same as the fullness. In infinity, full is as good as empty. Nothingness is empty and full." And David Lucian also used this uh, from this uh, the seven sermons to the dead. I have uh, several colleagues. They did research compared with the, in the 1916. Use the seven sermons to the dead relationship to the Tao Tao Te Ching, and the relationship to the Chinese Buddhism, and also the key, the key thread is the the Zhong idea is equilibrium. Why so Chinese? In the two essays in analytical psychology, that's the seven volumes of collected works, Yun says. I might invoke Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu, the author of Tao Te Ching, and appreciate his concept of Tao, the middle way. You use the middle way, the creative center of all things. That's the truth. That's why so Chinese. It's not, it's not related to a country or place or geography or some people somewhere. It's the philosophy. It's the principle. It's a gift from the heaven. Yeah, I mentioned in psychological types, you quote many passages from the Lao Tzu to explain the uniting symbols, united or uniting symbols. For example, and you quote 
this from uh, let's see which chapter and uh, by Lao Tzu the there were something formless, formless yet complete that existed before the heaven and the earth without sound, without substance, dependent on nothing, unchanging, all pervading, unfailing. One may think of it as the mother of all things and the heaven. Its true name we don't know. We in Chinese, the Tao is the name that we give it. That's from the Lao Tzu famous chapter. So you used, I'm the, I'm the chief editor of the translation of the collected works of C.G. Jung. So quite familiar with the collected works, not only in psychological types. Jung used the so well of the Tao De Jing in the whole of his uh, the 18 volumes of the collected works. For instance, Jung says, unfortunately, our Western mind lacking all culture in this respect, Jung said, has never yet devised a concept, not even a name for the union of opposite through the middle parts. Middle parts is the Zhong, is Chinese, China Chinese. Con uh, continue for a quote from CG. That most fundamental item of inward experience, which could respectable be set against the Chinese concept of a Tao, it is at once the most individual fact and the most universal the most legitimate fulfillment of the meaning of the individual's life is the Tao. That's uh, the Tao, you said, is the middle way. It's the meaning. Right. The popular translation of the Tao is the way, big W. Richard Wilhelm translated Tao as meaning. Very interesting. Big M and the big W. The way and the meaning. So for C.G. Jung, Tao is the right way. Quote, Jung said, Tao is the right way, the region of Lao, the middle road between the opposite, freed from them and yet uniting them in itself. The purpose of life is to travel this middle road and never to divide towards the opposite. That's uh, this quotation from uh, the two essays in analytical psychology, the collect words of seven, the sevens. And uh, let's see, we probably are used another few minutes. We came for discussion for 30 minutes. Yeah, we and have, certainly we have as much time as you have available to you, sir. We, uh, right now we have, uh, quite a few people. We have 64 people. We've had as many as 72 during the course of this conversation uh, on this line. So I, I could just give you a sense of it. That, uh, if, if you look at the gallery view, you can see <laughs> we have many folks here. Uh, okay. so, so we can open to uh, questions. Are there questions from the house? Uh, Does anybody, is anybody prepared to ask a question? Or does anybody want to ask a question? I've been really curious about what the difference is between the alchemy of the Chinese and the alchemy of the West. Is that something you can speak to? Thank you. And um, I think C.D. Yong, the 12 volumes, 13 volumes, even the 14 volumes, C.G. Jung focused on alchemy, and, uh, and uh, he compared already. For in China, the, the alchemy, we used to use the inner alchemy, like the, what C.G. Jung wrote the commentary of the secret golden flower, it's a psychology. 
the Western alchemy, the Western alchemy, even China, we had that similar. You cannot outside the inner alchemy, but outside, like the we can see, we really want symbolically, but not only symbolically. We have the process, the materials, the alchemy to get the gold, for instance. Even Si Jun used a lot of uh, materials through the Middle Age, even the, the Western alchemy, but they are more important in the process, like what we know that symbol symbolically for the individuation process, the changing color, the different elements, the change of the elements, and even the chemistry later developed the Western chemistry. This is the Western style. But in China, the alchemy with the name the inner alchemy is more, more introverted, introverted. So if we used psychological types, we have an introverted, extroverted. So the Western alchemy is more extroverted. Even Sijun alchemy between the introverted, probably for Sijun, the Chinese way, the Taoist way is too much introverted. And the Western alchemy, probably I'm not used too much of extroverted, but the Sijun want to put them together for psychology of alchemy. So that's my responding for your question. Um. Hi, thanks, thanks for your talk. It's uh, very nice hearing about the I Ching from, from like a, a Chinese perspective. I was wondering about the symbol of um, the serpent slash dragon in East and West. Um, because it's, it's, uh, the dragon, is, and dragon and serpent is very prominent in, in both uh, East and West. Um, I live in Singapore, so it's kind of a mix here. Although in my culture and as a Chinese person, I would say that um, whenever it's a dragon, it's, um, it's very from China or you know, it's very Chinese embedded. Um, but I, I see that in my studies, I see that it's, uh, it's a different thing when you compare it to the dragon of the, of the West. So I was wondering if you could um, talk a bit about that. Thank you. Yes, thank you. It's another very interesting topic or the same of a dragon in the East and the West. My response, I think it's very interesting, your thought is true. In the Western mythology, slay of the dragon became a hero. The dragon probably is a shadow, is that kind of, or even somehow it's a evil. In China, the dragon is so beautiful and the dragon authority, the dragon is, uh, is all the, the king, for instance. The, my responding at this moment, I, I would like to thank you very much for your question and your st stimulating my thinking at this moment. For three levels, heaven, human, human being, and earth. We have a three level of the symbol for the dragon. A human being, we are talking about the difference in the East and the West. The dragon is a shadow or the king. The big eagle or something like that is okay. Symbolically, you take the positive or negative. But the dragon symbol in the Yi Jing, if we talk about the Yi Jing, you cannot slave the dragon because the dragon symbol is the stars. Is uh, the nine hexagram of the first chain hexagram. They use the symbol of the dragon and the ground and the, the dragon second line and appearing on the ground. So that's a two. The first, second line is the earth related to the dragon on the earth and the ground. Even the earth for its tense. We are not very sure inside the heart of the earth in the center, we are far, far from to reach what's inside. Yes. So the dragon, the, according to the mythology, 
the dragon is the guider or protector of the secret of the earth. The mountains and even the rivers in China is a dragon. It's a symbol of dragons of the mountain and the rivers. It's very interesting. In Chinese people, we are not have that kind, that kind of a methodology of the of the sea, for instance, the Poseidon image in Chinese philosophy. But in China, the Chinese Poseidon of the kingdom of the sea is a dragon. The dragon is uh, the king. We have a kingdom of the sea. So the so if the this level, especially for the Yijing, for the the third line and the fourth line, talking about the human being. What's the meaning of the dragon symbolically to human being, to our human world? And the fifth line and the top line is talking about the dragon in the heaven. It's very interesting. Some scholars try to, for instance, we know the, what's called, Da Xiong Xing Zuo, the big, Bear, who can put the Chinese and the, and the English? Ah, <laughs> Xiong Xing Zuo. Just a painter. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you from Singapore? You, you should know. What's the English for this? Uh, the big deeper, the big deeper. Yes. The, oh, the big seven deeper, stars. Know, yeah. yeah, the the yeah. seven stars so important. This dragon. Sometimes they are changing of the forms. Not only the big deep. We have a, this the, so my response to your question, the difference conflict between the symbol for the dragon, we try to not only use the way of a human being. We are human being, we are living between the earth and heaven. And uh, so for the dragon symbol for the image, like Si Jun learned from Yi Jin, <laughs> United, united, united at the least three levels of the symbol. And uh, we know that we have the fourth level and the fifth level. And so far we can take consideration of the three levels of the symbol of the dragons. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Adam, did you have something you wanted to say? Uh, no, I was just um, saying that I think I thought that uh, he was saying Ursa Major, the Big Dipper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, Ju 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 did, were you, were, Are you talking to me? Yes. Did you have something to add here? And. Can I have uh, uh, several minutes to sh to give a further explanation for my professor Shen? Oh, pl please go ahead if you. Okay, thank you. Could I share the screen with all of you? Yeah, let me f uh, let me make that possible first. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay. Thank you. All right, you can share the screen now. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, I need to share because I think uh, Professor Her had a wonderful time of sharing. So, I want to give the more details. Maybe it's more easier for. Have you? Uh, can you? Can you see the? Good screen? Luck, yes. Yes. Okay. Great. So I just want to show how Professor Shen had developed the explanations for the book. I think it was wonderful. And uh, for me, it's a great learning. And uh, this is a red uh, book. And uh, uh, this is a uh, red. Uh, you can see the development, development from the first uh, uh, character home to the end. That that means red. Do you still remember uh, Professor Shen had explained the left part means the silk mm -hmm. and the right part means the heaven 
and the earth and the connection. That means we can communicate with both earth and the, the earth and the heaven. So that's a kind of the great communicator uh, with the nature and uh, between the nature and the human being. This is the character for the red. How about this one? This is Zhu. That's also a red color and uh, also a kind of uh, red. And also my family name. <laughs> <laughs> my family name is Zhu. <laughs> yeah. And also this is the uh, Zhong. That's a middle. And also it means inner. So you can see how at the beginning they balanced and then developed to the end of the character design as a zhong, that's a middle. That's, that's very interesting. From a different, uh, uh, may, yeah. So mm, I think everybody knows our early character curved on the turco bone. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we developed it today. And this is a Dao De Jing. And you can see Lao Zi like to, um, to, to play with the children and also can talk with the, no, no matter how old or how young people are and uh, how high the heaven is and how low the earth is. The Lao Zi try to communicate with the, the all things and also this is a uh, I'm not uh, uh, very familiar uh, with the thing I will learn more but uh, Professor Shen has uh, shown the wonderful core I think and this is the Yi Jing and uh, like uh, Conover had talked about the yin and the yang and uh, positive and negative. We connected them together. We didn't uh, uh, as, regard it as the opposite one. We try to, okay, if you if we put it still, keep quiet, we can see the black color and the uh, white color and they contain each other. They can understand each other. Once it turns on, you can see the color is not that clear and the white is white and the black is black. And that's a kind of principle and the philosophy as Zhong Yong. Uh, this is the Yi Jing's Ba Gua. So we have the Dao Sheng Yi, uh, Yi Sheng Er, Er Sheng San, San Sheng Wan Xiang. Yeah. And this is a story about the Zhuangzhou dreaming butterfly. That's interesting. So we also have a very famous that Zhuangzhou Meng Wei Hu Die, Zhuangzhou Zhi Xing Ye. It means that it was fortunate of Zhuangzhou to dream of being a butterfly. Hu Die Meng Wei Zhuangzhou Hu Die Zhi Bu Xing Ye. But a misfortune for the butterfly to dream of being Zhuangzhou. Now that's a very interesting story. So I think it's a, Maybe, uh, and so, this uh, is uh, tell, it, tell us why it's uh, it was unfortunate for the butterfly to dream being Jugzu. I'm afraid I will occupy it too much time, or maybe ah, okay. not for this time. <laughs> Thank you. Right. And this is the Zhong, that's a Zhong Dao. Zhong Dao means the middle way, never yeah. go to the extreme, just stand in the middle, then keep balance, so you can be harmony to the people that in Buddhism, we call that the middle, middle way. But yeah. in Taoism, Taoism, we say to keep the middle way. So we also uh, call it like Zhong Yong. And uh, in China, we also uh, like to say the word, the harmony, that's He. He means Jia He Wan Shi Xing. So if everybody can, be ham can keep harmony, relation each other, the family can get better and better and better. It will be a well-being. Uh, you can enjoy the well-being, you can uh, enjoy the happiness. Every, everybody in the, uh, everybody in, at home is, uh, 
joyful. So something like that. And this is the Zhong Yong. That's uh, what uh, my professor Shen has taught. That's the equilibrium of the golden mean. That's Zhong Yong. That means we need to discuss, uh, we, we need to consider things um, from different views. We cannot just uh, judge from the certain views. We need to be a balance. We need to see everything uh, in a how many ways, something like that. And uh, uh, this is uh, the uh, yin yang. And also we can see the top is fire and balance with water and the earth balance with mountain, wind balance with uh, wind, heaven okay. and the lake and the thunder, something like that. So, uh, a uh, jealousy love of uh, eating. So I think uh, you had, uh, yeah, Skip has a wonderful explanation for us already. So thank you. Yeah. So thank you, Professor Shen. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, that's uh, all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Xu Xiaojie. Thank you. Zhu Xiaojie. Uh, very good. That's very helpful. Um, so are there, are there, I have a, I have a couple of things that I want to talk about, but I, I want to give everyone a chance first. So are there others? Uh, I, I've got one more question, but I, I mean, if someone else is going to ask. No, go one. ahead, Nick. So, so oh, sure. uh, yeah, just a quick one. Uh, Professor Shen, um, I was just wondering, like, um, in terms of the average or the everyday Chinese mindset when when they actually use the I Ching, let's say to ask it something, right? Um, what What is that like? Um, and then I think how I'm asking is in terms of, um, because when I read a lot about it, it's from um, the Jungian side and, and um, from the West actually. And, and what I see there is that there's a very um, sharp demarcation between subject and object inside and outside. Um, and, and for Carl Jung, even for Carl Jung actually, and, and that's why he had, uh, he came up with, um, you know, his principle of synchronicity, um, that the outside world will reflect the, the inside. And, and I mean, I, when I use it, um, when I use it, it is always accurate. And, and not just that, I think for me, it is not just symbolic, so it's not just psychological. And I feel that that is closer to the Chinese mindset, actually. But I mean, I can't say. Um, um, so I was just wondering, um, like, for Chinese people, I mean, you would know better. What is the idea of the inside versus the outside? Thank you. The, I'm not very sure. I, uh, for the point to answer, uh, but uh, I try. And if you are keen to uh, continue your thinking about this, for the aging and uh, in everyday life, intro, in, in, inward and outward, and uh, probably can talk about the secret inside of the aging, because. Uh, Today, we are used the synchronicity several times when I started. It's raining, it's a lightning, it's a shang, thunder. And uh, mm. the, Hong Po, the lady just showed some, uh, uh, I didn't know that. She probably, when she listening and she prepared some uh, pages, and because I mentioned the name of the why the red book is so red, Zhu Hong, just her name. I didn't realize. So just another yeah. synchronicity. That's she so excited to show you his her responding to the what I talk about the the the, the some contents. The so the synchronicity Sijun learned from the Yijing is such the secret of Chinese science or Chinese uh, philosophy, and the Pauli W Pauli and uh, helped Sijun to make synchronicity as a principle can be accepted by the West. And not only synchronicity, 
still some secret to be behind of the or behind of the synchronicity. Behind of a synchronicity, I can use the term from the Yijing, the 31 hexagram and the 61 hexagram. The 31 hexagram, the translation is influenced by the Richard, Richard Wilhelm. Not enough. Influence mm. is, is a too simple for influence. The, so let's through the image, like I use the, the Chinese characters, the readable archetype. The Xian in Chinese, from the Yijing, that's a 31 hexagram, the first hexagram of the Xia Jing. You're the talking lower, about San, San Si Yi, right? 31, Wu Wing. The Xian Gua San, is 31. 31. 30, yes, okay, okay. That's a Wu Wing, yeah. yeah. Influence, the, yes. For, for this term, character in Chinese, means uh, uh, the Richard Wilhelm translation is uh, uh, influence, but we use the heart. The, the, for instance, what we talk about the xian means uh, influence, heartfelt influence, heartfelt influence. But heart, the heaven and earth, they, they have a heartfelt influence each other, we can get the real harmony. Otherwise, it's chaos. Otherwise, it's a virus everywhere in today the world. Otherwise, it's uh, threatening. Yeah. Yes, it's world. like it's um, it's it's like I personally I, I have found that um, um, it's about two modes. Um, so the mode of the I Ching seems to be about pattern formation. Pattern formation, you know, um, things coming together, pattern formation, and, yes. and, and the Western mind seems to be about, the Western mind notices that, but it breaks down the patterns into divisions and a linear process. So going further, um, going further, I mean, for me personally, is that um, I am able to do away with the personal, mean, meaning that when things like what you said happened, um, you know, like let's say the thunder or, or you know, these synchronicities. Um, for me, that is also me. Yes. And, but uh, I, yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah, sorry. It's okay, you can continue. Please. Oh, um, no. So I'm, I'm just saying that, um, but, but if I said, you know, to let's say my regular friends that that's me, then you will like, some will, oh, you're crazy. That's not you. You are a person that, you know, says I and has a name. And I mean, my response is yes, I know that. And all of us are here with a name, all our names are printed. But um, so it's, it's more a case of um, being able to simultaneously um, perceive, not only perceive reality, but engage the world with these two modes. Um, one which, you know, forms reality by patterns and things coming together. And another one which puts them into blocks and and I think it's not either or it's it's both end and oh uh, yeah that's um, that's that's what I want to say. Yes, as we are talking about the thirty one hexagram of the Yijing, we are we are trying to make a further exploration of the secret behind of the synchronicity. What's making of the synchronicity? And uh, so I talk about the heaven and the earth that's uh, influenced for you, the heart felt, you, the heart. And the second sentence is uh, the cities. The cities, through the heartfelt influence to the people, to, every, to everyone, so we can get the harmony of this human world. The harmony of the human world, we cannot separate from the harmony of the nature, heaven and the earth. So that's still very severe, that kind of a serious problems we are facing today. And then that's called the heartfelt or whole heart, wholehearted influence. The second hexagram is the 61. The translation of Wilhelm is the inner truth. In Chinese, we named, not we named, in the original name of the Yijing is the Zhongfu, just use the equilibrium, the YSO Chinese. The 61 hexagram, 
the first line, second line is a yang line. The third and the fourth is a yin line. The fifth and up line is a yang line. So this symbol is translated by Richard Wilhelm, the inner truth. The inner truth you can respond in. Like I quoted some from the Lao Tzu, the inner, not really empty is English term, but in Chinese we use the Xu, Wei Dao Ji Xu. This Xu is not that kind of empty. Yung sometimes also and uh, curious about this Chinese empty. Empty is not empty. Empty is uh, container. Empty is continue. Containment. So it's not. Say... Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. Yeah. Go Would on. you say uh, you said hexagram thirty one, and that is uh, influence um, bracket wooing, and it's the you know wooing like like courtship in a very um, courtship. It's the most courtship hexagram in the I Ching for me. Would you say it has anything to do with um, eros? The when we have when because we have because of learned, the heart, yeah. yeah. Yes, because of the heart. The yeah. the Si Jun described the sixty one hexagram very beautifully. You have a letter with a Zimmer. Zimmer is a authority professor for Indian philosophy. They talk about the knowing. Jung said first, my wisdom is knowing the unknowing. I know that I don't know something like that. This is quite famous, and many philosophers express that way. Like you mentioned, the Wu Wei, the no action. That that's attitude. It's not just the word. It's an attitude. It's an inner understanding. So from the inner truth of a six, sixty-one has grown. It's a responding. The responding have a condition. Like we talk about reflection for the red book, and the search in the soul in the postmodern condition. So the condition, so you can heartfelt influence, you can have heartfelt, not heartfelt, heartfelt influence and responding from the heart. Without this yeah. responding, you cannot combine, make synchronicity happening. So what's behind the synchronicity? I can use the example for the 31 high school and the 61 has grown. So that can go back to your question. If we consult the gene through the coins or through the process of your sticks, that takes longer, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, we can get the has grown. The has grown is meaningful because it is living. What we can understand is the living most people, we get hexagram, we remember hexagram, we open the yijing, we like a dictionary. No, you cannot, that's the yijing in the book, but yijing in your heart. In China, my students, myself, we have a yijing of the, uh, what's called, xin yi, the yijing for your heart or yijing from your heart. I made eight principles how to use the Yi Jing in the clinical situation with the clients. Uh, some students use it very well. And this is a long tradition from the original Yi Jing, the, we call the He Tuan Lu Shu, because the magic numbers and the images of ori origination of the Yi Jing, the center, like the heart, like a drum, the middle, the core, related to the heart, number five. And uh, from that, without any words, the eating without words originally, and with the Fushi who draw the eight hexagrams, along the way by the Confucius, I mentioned the Ten Wens, and uh, in the Song Dynasty, several quite famous Chinese philosophers, they pay special attention to the knowledge of the heart with the I and learn from them. And then, and then, then, finally, with the Richard Wilhelm in China. Mm -hmm. Richard Wilhelm happened, met the teacher Lao Nai Xuan. Yun 
didn't see this uh, Chinese uh, sage, but the Chinese sage Lao Naixuan lived in the in the building with Richard Wurham taught hand by hand of Yi Jing to Richard Wurham. Now Richard Wurham took this Yi Jing to Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping read Yi Jing many years ago before, but that's a Liak, Lake Lex, his translation beautifully. He called the the even the Bible of the translation of Yi Jing, but Yun said, I cannot understand at all because it's just the words and the words. When he met Richard Wurham, I can see he lightened CGU, weakening of his heart. So he, and that's, that's tradition. And we, I mentioned the Banz, uh, read the Red Book. Banz translated his uh, young student from German to English. So the English translation of the Yi Jing through Richard Wilhelm. Richard Wilhelm is the teacher of the tradition. And the CG Yong wrote the beautiful forward and the best translation with the psychoanalyst, uni analyst. So that's uh, Yi Jing combined or entered the psychology beautifully in a way. And for this understanding the, with the heart, you can use the hexagrams to uh, consult not every day because you can use the coins or sticks to get hexagram. But I mentioned this evening you, for you in the morning in China with uh, the rain is image of the hexagram. The wind is image of the hexagram. The thunder is image of a hexagram and the Latin also. So the hexagram, like escape, we talk about the unconscious is everywhere. The psyche also everywhere. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. <laughs> Go ahead, <laughs> Jen. Go ahead. Yeah, so, so yeah, I just actually start to uh, read Actually, just started learning Dao Tzu Jing actually in America. <laughs> I'm originally from China, but I never studied Dao Tzu Jing. But I actually joined a group, and then it's quite interesting. Actually, I found because I read a book called The Secret. You know, the American is very I think is Australian author. So my actually I, I found the Secret is very interesting, and it's actually and I realized what the Secret talking about is actually Dao. You know. So what the secret actually is a Tao. So once you find the Tao of the nature, then you actually synchronize. There's so many synchronicity. So everything coincident all happens and whatever you want to achieve, we will achieve. So it's quite interesting. It seems like Western version of... And I also learned, did some research, they mentioned um, I also listened to Huang Di Nei Jing recently, and they said Dao De Jing, Huang Di Nei Jing, and Yi Jing, the three pillar of the Taoism. And they also mentioned the Buddhism actually come from India, and then because of the Buddhism developed so fast, so then they start to summarize Taoism, kind of like they can compete with each other. But in the end, actually China is more dominant by Buddhism and Taoism. And Yi Jing, I heard about it for a long time. I never really understand. I actually have a book about it, but I can never understand anything about the book. So, and I heard, since people really can understand it, they can tell the future. I actually have a friend. She actually doing this uh, tarot teller with us. Like she pull out three cards and she can tell our future. We ask a question. And she actually said she studied Yi Jing I don't know how she did that, but anyway, it's very, and the, it reminds me about Carl Jung's astrology. Maybe it seems there's some coincidence between those two, you know. It seems, what I, my understanding is like, because it's all the same uh, Tao or way, making everything, so one element reflects the whole universe. Basically, if you can read the element, you can understand the whole universe. They work the same way, just different scale. That's my understanding, but it seems still it's very hard to really, you know, I thought that'd be great if you can really manage, master that, then you can do anything you want, right? If you can, if you master the Tao, understand the Tao, or the, the secret behind 
everything make. Yeah. I think that may be the Yi Jing, I don't know. So very curious to learn, you know, how to understand it further. Yeah, thank you very much for your sharing of these uh, three books, so important, Yi Jing, Dao De Jing, and uh, we call the Huang Di Nei Jing, it's, uh, it's a yellow empire, uh, classics for Chinese medicine especially, but it's not only for Chinese medicine, because it's a way of life, how yeah. to you make harmony uh, with, uh, between the uh, heaven and earth and the human being relationship. So the 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 Huang Di Nei Jing, the Yellow Empire, the classics, is psychology. It's a depth psychology. So I appreciate for Dr. Scape for this uh, reading group for depth psychology. Thank you. All the Jing and uh, Cjung psychology. I know that you give a serious uh, lectures on the Red Book, right? Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, in China, in the middle of China, I cannot see you to be. But in my car, I can I can see I can use uh, access you to be beautifully. Yeah. And your chapter and the chapter for the Red Books. Thank you. Um, I, I do have a couple of points that I wanted to uh, raise with you. Um, they're not directly with the Red Book, but uh, I wanted to mention a couple of things that you may not have heard of. Um, one was that um, we're all also thinking about, in terms of Lego, Logos and Eros, we're thinking about left brain and right brain. Okay, and it happened that I was in um, uh, Japan for eight years, but uh, five years in business in the early 1980s. And at that time, um, there was an article about a man who had lost his, uh, he, he had had a stroke and he had lost access to um, his uh, right brain. Okay, and I'm sure you're familiar with the fact that it, uh, the Japanese language uses both um, Chinese characters and it has two kinds of syllabaries in addition to Romaji uh, in Roman letters. In addition to Roman letters, there are four ways to write chi Japanese, right? One of them is Chinese characters. One of them is uh, sort of a, a way of expressing future and past tense, et cetera, uh, and verbs in Japanese. And one of them is used to express foreign words, katakana and hiragana uh, is the, the one that helps with verbs. <laughs> and, and so the, the phonetic language is very left brain, okay? It's the way Westerners think. And the, the Chinese characters are very right brain. They're, you're reading things in pictographs and pictures. And, um, and what happened to this man was that when he lost the use of his right brain, he could no longer read the kanji, the, the Chinese characters. And so in a sense, he lost the heart aspect of his understanding. He could still read kana. He could, he, he could read katagana, ramaji, and, ka, and hiragana, but he could not read the kanji. Um, and um, so first of all, I wanted to ask you if you have any comment about that. Okay, thank you. I think it's a very interesting question. As we are no CGU, I just gave uh, two examples for responding. Why is the Chinese character for thinking beyond of the left part and the right part of the brain is uh, brain and heart. The up image is brain, lower part is the heart. Put them together is the Chinese way of thinking. Thinking with the heart, not only divided for two parts, left and right. So that's a, could be, this image is can be a wonderful way for responding to your thinking Japanese 
and with the for scientific psychology and the brain psych the brain science, but we neglected the function the meaning of the heart. For instance, after since the nineteen seventies, when the heart planted, the people, even recently, not probably some secret of the heart. Even I'm talking about the psychology of the heart, not the organ of the heart. It's、uh, but even that, there's mystery of the heart. For instance, Egypt, even the ancient language, ancient culture, they are put a lot that kind of secret of the heart. So someone probably can write this Chinese character, the brain and the heart together. This beautiful image is a thinking heart. The thinking heart, from the Taoist philosophy, like Lao Tzu and the Zhuang Tzu. Just for for example, we know the butterfly dream, and you also, yeah, during the this this evening we mentioned of that several times. Zhuang Tzu gave a beautiful story, and the Zhuang Tzu, the Taoist, he called it Xin Zai, fasting of your heart, fasting, fasting your heart. That means you don't hear, only use your ear. You should use your heart to see, to hear, and also you can use the qi. The qi translation energy, empathy, and with the, to for your seeing and the listening. So listening with the heart is my secret weapon for. For for depth psychology, for instance, only that you can go into the depths. Otherwise, you are cannot go through the limitation of the consciousness, the ego. If you if you are limited by your ego, you cannot go enough for depths or depth spirit, depths of the spirit. Spirit for seeing the active imagination, he tried to break the limitation of the ego. Yeah, so that is one of the responding for the another is a story. I think you know everyone know the story in nineteen twenty four, Xi Jinping in United States he visited New Mexico, and American Indian is the name, the chief, Mountain yeah. Lake. Yes, Mountain Lake. Lake. Yes. Yeah, they have beautiful dialogue. The Mountain Lake is for the young. You are, you are, you are white man. You are mad because you are thinking with your head. Right. Yeah, yeah. Your head is left, e- either left or right. You're mad with your head. So you argued with him. Everyone used the head, left brain, or or right. But the American Indian will use our heart. See, do a long diary, and、um, for this reflection, yeah, that's yeah. Changing, changing him, thinking with the heart. Yeah. So that's my psychology of the heart. It's my free lecture title, and the subtitle is the heart of union analysis. The first level is the psychology of the heart, and the heart of union analysis. Yes,、uh, one of your colleagues,、uh, Coco、uh, Yangkui Zhang, has given the character for heart. But what what is the character for heart? For thinking with the heart, what is that character again? I I'm sorry, I've forgotten my my Zhongguo Zi. Su <laughs> Su is uh, no, uh, uh, this is heart, but the thinking is Su Su. Who can write? And this、uh, I just give example. Probably we can, we can. Oh, it's twelve、uh, o'clock. I give our、uh, example. Example is uh, and uh, the thinker.、Mm-hmm. It's、uh, my personal story. Not really personal. We already know Rodin, beautiful, and the statue of a thinker.、Mm-hmm. After the this beautiful work, and Rodin asked a question. He called my thinker, my thinker.、Uh, let's see. My thinker thinking with which part of the body? He he asked.、Mm-hmm. Very beautiful. Very interesting question. Left part, left brain or right brain, for instance. Yeah, yeah. And then, Rodin he answered by himself. 
First, it's the artist way. My thinker is not thinking with his head. The first answer from, uh, from the Rodin. Second, my thinker is not thinking with his chin, of course. <laughs> if not with the head, not with the chin. And then he, he, go, he goes on. My thinker is not thinking with the, with the wrist, with the head, this way. And then and he, he said, my thinker thinking with his whole body. And then when I looked, meditated of his uh, question, yeah, in Chinese, if we talk about the red book, why so, why the red book is red, why so Chinese? So the thinker thinking with his heart. And uh, the poet originally for this uh, thinker on the gate, go to the hell. I'm sorry. It's, it's a gate for life and death. Yeah. It's a life for virus today, for instance. Yeah. That's it. Not only to, we are, I would thank you so much for your invitation for this talk today. We really, we are, yeah. Do, do you have time for one more point here? Sure, sure. Please. Uh, if we're, Holding you back, um, I, I don't mind. I, we can continue for a bit, but I, uh, this character uh, is a Japanese character, uh, or a character that I'm familiar with in Japanese is Otoko, and, uh, but it, obviously it's a Junguotsu, it's a Chinese character. Uh, and this is the character for man in Japan. I don't, uh, I think in China, in, in Chinese, the character for man is somewhat different. <laughs> but but uh, this is Otoko in Japanese. And very interestingly, um, there was a, a poll taken between Westerners and Easterners about this character. And the question is, and, and of course, this character means uh, on the top is a rice field. And on the bottom is strength um, in, from a Japanese point of view. And so, but the Westerners and the uh, Japanese or Easterners answered this question, which direction is this man going? And um, do you have a, do you, do you know this story, Dr. Shen? <laughs> Not really, but uh, yeah, you can finish your. You yeah. can tell us if some story. Okay. Yeah. So the answer, the answer is ninety percent of all Westerners say that this man is going to the right, while ninety percent of all Easterners uh, say that this man is going to the left, um, and uh, for whatever. So it's a, it's a point made to show that um, when, when you learn something through logos, through the word, uh, and through these uh, kana type things, uh, you're learning in an entirely different way with an entirely, and, and you end up with an entirely different point of view when you look at it, anything, when, I mean, just looking at that image, I mean, any Westerner can look at that image and say, oh yeah, he's going to the right, <laughs> right? Uh, or most Westerners can, but uh, most Easterners say he's going to the left. And, uh, and I, I've always, I have a theory about why that would be, but anyway, that's the, that's the story in Japan. It's a article I read in, um, I suppose the Japan Times or something like that. <laughs> Thank you. Now, you. Then I give my response, my answer. Okay, please. Besides the left of the brain or right part of the brain and to, to this uh, man or male in Chinese or in Japanese, the meaning is a male and uh, for the right or to the left. For this character, if you make some change, 
upper one is its field, it's okay. But this field, not only outside field, is your inner field. Uh -huh. If you talk, everyone should have keep your inner field. And the lower part, for give the strength or direction as you described, if you change this part to the image of the heart, for instance, that's the Chinese way of thinking. We are talking about the thinking just now. It's exactly if you change the lower part, you put, or if you put your heart on the lower part, change it for the strength. That's the Chinese way of thinking, like the dialogue of a CGU and the mountain lake. Mm -hmm. So the Chinese way is the middle way. The doctrine for the mean is equilibrium. Mm -hmm. And this way is not going to the west, it's not going east. Probably it's going north, for instance, or south. If people are confused by the east and the west, we are neglected with the north and the, and the south. So, but anyhow, for instance, the, the if we are not really going to the, a few years ago, the Eleanor's, the round table session, have a theme, modernity. If for everyone, the South or South Africa or, or the China, for instance, or West countries, we are the only way for modernity or different way. We even can reflection for individuation. It's only one way for individuation or each one have a different way for individuation for instance. Very interesting. So for me, if I go back to the talk, thank you for your invitation, why the red book is red, because the red connection to China, and China is not the country, but it's the principle of this equilibrium. And the, the heart, the term, in the Latin characters, C-O-R, probably pronunciation is a core. If uh, C-O-R-E is a core English term, but C-O-R is uh, from Latin, it means the, the center, the core, for instance, but it's the heart. The heart is the seat, like the tree, the seat. So probably if in this Chinese, uh, Japanese or Chinese word, there's a field, you plant your seat for your energy. For male, we are, we are working on the field. For your female, you are weaving, you know, like the red work, like that, why the red book is red. That one character, one is a female, we are weaving silk, right? Mm -hmm. And the red part is like the energy for this uh, male. Gong, gong is a gong zuo, to your work, work on the field. The man outside, we have to do the hunting, to go to the field. Women in the house, in Chinese. If you put, if you put a women in the house, that's a piece of your, it's, that means a piece, harmony. If with the female women in the, protected by the, so the, for this is beautifully, you show this uh, character. If you are seat, your heart, up is your field. It's not, I, I don't think it's going to the West, it's the right way. Or okay. going to the, go to your inner field. That's uh -huh. the image of the inner truth. Thank you very much. For yeah. No escape for everyone. <laughs> well, it's a late that, evening already, but it's the morning in China. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shen, for a very interesting conversation. Uh, I'm so pleased that you have been with us. Um, for Speaking for myself, I'm willing to stay on for a while longer, but uh, I understand that you may have other activities to do, and I, I will uh, be making you aware of these events as we go forward, because... I'm sure you would uh, like to know. 
uh, when some of your other fellow writers uh, are, are uh, interviewed with us, uh, with our group. Uh, and uh, if any of your uh, followers want to follow our activities here, uh, they're welcome to write to me at um, uh, skip.conover at gmail.com. Um, and uh, I will be happy to add them to our list. Um, and uh, I'll just put it, um, put, put my email address on the chat so people can see it. And uh... <laughs>